asset registers. So you're going to need two kinds of asset register. You're going to need a physical asset register and you're going to need a data asset register. The data asset register you can get from your GDPR implementation when you're mapping out your data flows. Uh, and I rely um, on the creation of the ROPO record of processing activities and the data asset registers that are coming out of that. If not, then you can ask and we can provide, I would provide a data asset register anyway, but I'm not including it um, within the scope of these videos. What we're touching on here is the physical asset register. Now a physical asset register is a register of devices that can store, process, transmit uh, information. So the kind of things that we're looking at is, you know, servers, PCs, laptops, we're looking at printers, uh, we're looking at uh, mobile devices, we're looking at removable media, we're looking at wireless uh, network components. So we're looking at things like the transmitters, we're looking at hotspots, we're looking at any physical device uh, that can store, transmit or process data. We're not necessarily bothered about mice and keyboards, um, but we are bothered uh, about things that, for example, printers uh, that have memory lo located within them. You can get asset registers in this modern day and age from a number of different locations and maybe through things like your Active Directory or your online implementation will have that built in. So this is just as a stopgap that if you don't have something already that can generate that asset register for you, then here is one way of recording it. I am not saying duplicate the information that you have uh, and store it in here. What I'm saying is that this will provide you with a solution if there is no other solution available to you. Uh, your document is going to come with document markup as always and then you've got an asset register with a number of uh, columns within it. The kind of things that we're interested in and these can change but driven by the standard itself you're going to see that we're going to want things like an asset number. We're going to want the asset serial number. We're going to assign assets to owners. Again the standard for 27001 says assets are assigned to owners. We're going to want to know the status of that of whether or not it's been decommissioned, whether it's active, whether it's been deployed. We're going to want to know the date that the device was uh, assigned, the date that it was returned. We're going to want to know the date that that device was last checked for a number of things like antivirus, anti-malware, patching, all things that are required as part of the standard that you're going to record in your asset register. We're going to want to know who, check who checked it. We want a description of the asset and what that asset does. We want a high level overview of what that asset has of it in, in terms of information. Is it com company information, employee information, account information? Is it just marketing or sales information? Is it emails? What is the, the data that is held upon that device? And then how important is that device to you? So if you've got a primary domain controller and you've only got one of them, then it's going to be high. You know, if you've got a marketing laptop that's only ever used for sales presentations and only has that presentation on it, then it's going to be low. So you, there is guidance, but you want to understand how important that device is to you. You're going to classify that device as whether or not it's confidential, internal or, or public. So that is based on the data that the device either stores, processes or transmits and you always take the highest classification that exists within the within that device so even if there is only one piece of confidential information then the entire device is classed as confidential so you want to be making sure that the way that the data is processed and transmitted is managed in such a way that you minimize the amount of confidential data that is out there then you want the location of the asset and physically where is it and then any notes that go along with that. So the primary focus of this document is that you can articulate that you know what you have and therefore you can control what you know. You cannot control what you do not know. And you can build this up with additional controls. There may be additional things that you do, but as a baseline, these are things that I see time and time again. Assets are allocated to people. When, where are they? What do they do? What data is on them? When were they last checked? Who checked it? Is your antivirus up to date? And is your patching up to date? Your patching in your antivirus is going to form part of your ongoing management and is very, very important. And again, that may be recorded in other systems, the, the detail of it, but you're going to want that within your asset register. So in summary, you need an asset register of data and an asset register of physical assets. Those can be located elsewhere and within specific tools, but in the absence of those, you have a spreadsheet that can do that for you and you understand the level of information that is required when recording your assets.